Hi everyone, welcome to Interview Pro. In this video, let's learn one of the important concepts in Angular, life cycle hooks. An Angular component's life cycle starts when Angular creates the component and displays it. Throughout its life cycle, Angular keeps checking for changes in the component's data and updates the DOM accordingly. The life cycle ends when Angular removes the component and its view from the screen. So there are eight life cycle hooks. This is the order in which these life cycle hooks are triggered. The first method that gets triggered is ng on changes when the component input properties are updated. If the component has no inputs, then this hook is not triggered. Next hook is ng on init. This hook is called only once when the component is initialized and data that the component needs to display is fetched. If you want to execute any logic that needs to be executed during initialization, you can put that logic in this hook. Then the next hook is ng do check. This is invoked during every change detection run immediately after ng on changes and ng on init. When I say change detection, Angular checks for changes in the data binding properties and updates DOM accordingly. Every time input to a component is updated, this hook is triggered. So we see this ng do check trigger multiple times. Then we have ng after content in it. This is called only once after Angular has fully initialized all the content projected into the component using ng-content tag. Using this hook, you can perform actions after the component's content using ng-content is initialized. ng-after-content check is called after Angular has checked the projected content in the component. It is invoked every time after ng do check hook is triggered. Then comes the next hook ng after view in it. It is invoked once after Angular has fully initialized the components view and its child views. ng after view checked is called after Angular has checked the components view and its child views. It is invoked after ng after view in it and also every time ng, ng do check is triggered. Then comes the final hook ng on destroy. This is invoked just before Angular destroys the component. This is ideal for cleanup logic like when you want to unsubscribe from observables or detach from event handlers. Let me show you an example that explains how these lifecycle hooks are triggered. This is the example. I have app component.html where I have an input that binds data to the property name one, which I have declared inside the app component ts. So I have three variables display child one, display child two, which are initially set to false, and name one, which is an empty string. Then I have two buttons based on which I'll decide whether I want to display the child components or not. I have the corresponding methods in app component.ts which would just toggle these properties. If it is on display child one or if it's the button that says display child one, then it calls on display child one where this dot display child one is set to the opposite of the previous value. If it was false, then it will become true. Otherwise, uh, it gets false. The same with on display child two as well. Then I have uh, child components here. So I, I have created a child component called child one. In the HTML, you will just see child component text and we are using content projection. Uh, we have already seen ng content in our previous videos. So whatever content that I pass between app child one tag, that will be displayed in place of this ng content. So I am rendering this app child one twice. So for the first one, I'm passing name as child one. Name is the input 
um, let me go to childcompen.ts. We have uh, two inputs here, name and should display. So for the first one, I'm passing name as child one. For the second instance, I'm passing name as child two. And I'm passing should display equals display child one, uh, which is nothing but the property of the parent uh, component. So this will be displayed only if display child one is true. And the second instance will be displayed only if display child two is true. In parent component, which is app component, and also in child component, I have these methods, which are lifecycle hooks. So I have ng on changes. ng on changes takes an input called changes, which is of type simple changes. What this does is it keeps track of all the properties of this component. Whenever there is a change, it will uh, trigger ng on changes. And using this, we can see what is the current value and what is the previous value. Then we have ng on init. I'm just uh, printing this message which says uh, parent component is initialized. And this will be called only for the first time where we can uh, initialize some logic that is required by our component. Then we have ng do check. This will be called every time there is a change to these properties. And every time there is, uh, every time the DOM has to be re-rendered. So that we call that as change detection. ng after content in it. Uh, this will be uh, triggered after the parent content has been initialized. Then we have ng after content checked. So this will be uh, running after ng content in it. And because this will be triggered only once, first time uh, it will run after ng content in it. And next time, whenever ng do check runs, it uh, ng after content in it will also ng after content checked will also run. Then once the content has been initialized in the parents component, parent component and also in the child component, we'll have ng after view in it. After this, we'll have ng after view checked. Finally, when the component is destroyed, we'll see ng on destroy. So uh, app component is unlikely to be destroyed. So there is a possibility that child component can be destroyed because if you look at app component.html, this child component will be rendered only when this property is true. It will be removed from the DOM completely if uh, ng child one is false. So when ng child one is false, it calls ng after uh, ng on destroy of the child component and then it removes that uh, component from the DOM. So let's go to the UI and uh, perform few operations and see how it works. So I have opened the console and uh, let me refresh the screen. So if you look at this, first constructor will be called. Let me go back and uh, go to app component.ts. We have constructor as well. So every component will have a constructor. This is the first method that gets triggered and it will be called only once. This will be triggered before uh, the properties input properties are initialized. So you cannot put your initialization logic in constructor. You have to put your initialization logic only in ng on in it because only then the input properties will be initialized. Uh, let me go to child component and look at the names here. So I'll uh, log uh, names and this dot name and this dot should display. Let me log these names in uh, ng on init as well. Let me go back and re-render. So I have parent constructor. Okay, uh, now we don't see any child components. That's why we are not going into child constructor. Uh, first, let's have a look at the parent uh, component methods. So first parent constructor is triggered, then ng on init parent component is initialized. As per the flow, it has to be ng on changes method. But 
if you remember ng on changes will be triggered only when there are changes to the input properties to this component we don't have any input properties we have input properties inside child component but not in the app component which is parent component so this method is skipped then we have ng on init which is where the parent component is initialized and then we have ng do check and ng after content in it because this is the parent component we are not uh, projecting anything into this component then we have ng after content check this will run after ng content in it then once the component view is initialized then we have ng after view in it that means this method will be triggered after this is completely initialized so after the uh, data for all these properties is received and this dom is rendered without any errors then we'll see ng after view in it method triggered once ng after view in it is triggered we will uh, it will trigger ng after view checked then uh, ng do check will be called again and ng after content uh, checked will be called after ng do check and ng after view checked will be called so these three methods keep repeating every time there is a change detection like uh, ng after view in it is run so the view is completely rendered which means uh, there was no view and now we have something to render on the dom that means there is some change that's why ng do check is triggered and uh, every time ng do check is triggered these two methods will be triggered so uh, this was triggered uh, twice maybe because we have two components now i'll click on let me clear this and i'll click on display child one so when we dis when we click on display child one what happened is the display child one property was initially false now it is set to true so when it is set to true this ng if will be true and this component will be rendered onto the dom that's why uh, something is added to the parent component that's why we see change detection running in the parent component and after that ng after content checked is run then child constructor is run and if you look at this the value is undefined in the child constructor so this dot name is coming as undefined then we have ng on changes now the value child one is passed from parent to the child component so previously it was undefined now the current value is child one so ng on changes is triggered uh, because we have two different inputs here name and should display ng on changes is uh, printing this twice because uh, in changes there will be two properties and for each and every property we are uh, printing this to the console so we have two ng on changes console logs then ng on in it is triggered and you can see that the names the name is child one and uh, uh, should display property is true so only after the component properties or inputs are initialized ng on in it will be triggered that's why you should always maintain your initialization logic in ng on in it because you might be using these inputs in your initialization logic then we have ng do check because there was a change and ng after content in it ng after content checked then ng after view in it of the child component is called ng after view checked of the child component is called ng after view checked of the parent is also called uh, we don't see ng after view in it here because it will be triggered only once for the first time it was triggered now when i made changes only ng after view checked will be triggered if i click if i clear this and click on display child 2 we'll see the methods related to child 2 uh, okay child 1 ng do check is run let me display click display child again so it will be set to false and we don't see the or let me refresh and click on uh, display child 2 now we see child 2 methods are triggered here so uh, then i have uh, 
input here if i put something the name property is updated so we are binding this input to name property whenever it is updated um, let me refresh and uh, clear the console logs now if i update we see ng do check custom change detection then we have ng after content checked and ng after view checked if there is a child component displayed and i change something in the parent then both uh, parent and child one change detections will be run now uh, let me clear this and click on display child one what happens is uh, now this is uh, true let me clear this uh, this was true if i click on it again it will be false so it will be removed from the dom now if i click on it you see ng on destroy is called so whenever the component is removed from the dom ng on destroy will be uh, triggered so this is all about life cycle hooks in angular if you like the content please like share and subscribe to interview pro thank you